don't believe what I just saw. This is one of the great moments in the history of baseball. Don't believe in miracles yet. Is this the dagger? August 21st, on today's Content Challenged episode, <laughs> Rolly fingers his way into the history books. Burt Reynolds brings pigskin to the silver screen. Even at age 49, Martina is still better than everybody else. Scheffler breaks 60. The U.S. men's hoops team barely breaks a sweat. The Red Sox spike Cleveland for a record. Southern California honors a legendary king, and Tiger reaches a peak few other mortals ever saw. And many, many other surprises and delights in this award-winning episode of This Day in Sports. Yes. Got a little sexual after the yeah. there. And you call it, you say Rolly Fingers? I say Rolly. Rolly. He said Rolly. Did I say Rolly? Ro- I don't know what, oh no. I'm, I think you got excited. We start over. I don't know, I think you got excited about your... <laughs> your wordplay. <laughs> I was excited about my content challenged. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. good. August twenty first. Yeah, I don't want to like yeah. doom us. I think that this this episode will be reliant on our personalities very much. <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely fine. And <laughs> not, I, it's not our fullest day historically. <laughs> August twenty first. Well, well, here's the thing. There's some good ones, but not as many. We, of course, uh, if you're listening, you rely on our personalities. Their audio, but if you're watching. You're looking for something sharp. You're looking for a Frank and his haircut right over oh, there. Yeah. And I'll tell you why that's a great segue, <laughs> because he got his haircut today at Cabin, Barber, and Gentleman Supply, the place we're in right now. Matt's got a sweater on right over there. Yeah. He, he seems to be pretty hot over there. Represent. I'm warm. Fine. But, but you were proud to have Cabin, Barber, and Gentleman Supply on board as our sponsor. And you know, it doesn't matter what kind of hair you got. They can take care of it. You get in here, Cabin's the place to be. It's an incredible barbershop, great atmosphere, smells great. We always say it smells great, always does. Always. Mm. Uh, Frank, a uh, few comments on your haircut today? Well, as usual, so I, I like to just go to any random barber. I kind of yep. show up unannounced. You got to book an appointment, though. That's that's one thing. But I just like, whoever's available, I'll take them. Yeah. And, you know. And they never they never miss. They, they never miss. Who was, your, who was your cutter today, Frank? Uh, I think it was. Uh, Putting them on the Lisa. spot. It was Lisa. 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 I met, met her for the first time. She was wonderful. She's been cutting hair for like 35 years. Oh. Yeah. She's, Amazing. She's awesome. That's the kind of professionals you can have yeah. down here at uh, Cabin, of yeah. course, cutting your hair. Yeah. Uh, Frank walked in. He said, I don't, I don't care about your scheduling stuff. I just walk in. I just, I'm just going to be here. Whoever, whoever wants to cut this hair, it's go a record for it. scratch moment. Yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. turns their just, head. And I just do me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Frank, Frank. We don't need a lot of content. It's going to be uh, fine. We'll be fine. Was it just a haircut you got the front? Because there's so much more you can get here uh, mm, merchandise, uh, uh, yeah. you can get hats. Yep. You can get, uh, uh, you can cut a, you socks. can cut a cigar here. You can get ties you can get a belt. Yeah. Belt buckle socks boxers yeah there boxers thank you so many things products here. products for your for your facial hair or your, yeah. your head of hair your or beard or... and of course frank said you know you try to make a scheduled appointment well if you can't make it here there are three locations oh, this is the port credit location but you got two other locations to get to get a shave get a cut get a ton of compliments when you roll out a cabin with a fresh look for more check out cabinforlife.ca or Frank Russo's headshot. Yeah. <laughs> Go to LinkedIn. <laughs> Who wants to kick off what happened here on uh, April 21st? April 21st. August, uh, August 21st. August 21st. August 21st. It's, it's April 21st. That's your birthday. That's my birthday. I want to bring birthday. it back. Happy yeah. birthday. Thank but you it so is much. not your birthday. It is not your so birthday. So many months ago. Uh, Happy to, birthday. Trying to squeeze something into August, August 21st. 21st. Thank yeah. you. Because, uh, Thank you. <laughs> I'll go with uh, August 21st, 1982. Let's talk about Milwaukee reliever Raleigh Fingers. Thank you. Because he became the first pitcher in MLB history to reach 300 saves when he saved a 3 2 Brewers win over Seattle at the Kingdom. Fingers actually allowed uh, both of the Mariners' runs in the ninth inning before finally closing it out to reach the milestone. He is now 15th all-time with 341 saves. Yeah. But the first to 300. That's Sandy. He's a hell of, she's a hell of a guy. Yeah, yeah. This is a bit of an inside story, but uh, we once hired Raleigh Fingers for a, a cameo for a friend of ours, and, uh, and two guys named Sandy hired Raleigh to do this thing for a friend of ours, Baron. And he said, Baron, those two gals at the office, they got you here. Thanks, Raleigh. <laughs> two guys. He called gals. Who cares? Couple of Sandys. Raleigh just went for it. But he was good. I, I he recommend was good. Raleigh yeah. on, I saw it. He uh, was cameo. good. Yeah, he, he was, was great. Good. He, he was into he it. He was better man. than Reggie Jackson. 
Uh, okay, uh, 2016, Kevin Durant scored 30 points as the U.S. men's basketball team comfortably defeated Serbia 96-66 in the gold medal game of the Rio Olympics. The team's head coach was Mike Krzyzewski of Duke. His assistants were Jim Beheim, Tom Thibodeau, and Monty Williams. And the team featured, interestingly, three Golden State Warriors players, none of whom were Steph Curry. Oh, yeah. Draymond, Harrison yeah. Barnes, and Clay Thompson. Yeah. No Steph Curry. Yeah. Kind of crazy to imagine now, isn't it, that like those three guys all went and yeah. not him. Maybe there was a reason. The U.S. team's closest game was in the prelim round when they defeated France by just three points. After a close semifinal win over Spain by six, they cruised in the final and finished the tournament undefeated at 8 0. Wow. Huh. That was uh, a pretty good team. That was Rio. That was Rio. That was not the redeemed team, nor no. was it the big disappointment no. team. It was the Rio. Yeah. Uh, the, it was the uh, Duran Duran. Olympics. Just thinking about yeah, that in yeah, my head. How'd yeah. that go? Mike, you a Duran Duran fan? Sorry, I just blacked out. What did, what did you say? <laughs> Probably not. He doesn't Probably have, not. He doesn't have that shit. Yeah. The Duran Duran years no. have uh, been lost. No, absolutely no. not. Absolutely. Just the hair. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, in 1953, Cleveland third baseman Al Rosen had two home runs and five RBI in a 7-3 win over the St. Louis Browns. It was the only game that season where he had two home runs and five RBIs, but at season's end, he became the first player in either league to be unanimously, unanimously I'm saying that word, like I'm drunk, but I'm not. Voted MVP, though I did think it was April 21st, so, so we're yeah, already in we trouble. don't know. <laughs> Unanimously voted MVP. He batted 336 with 43 home runs, 145 RBI that season. That is Al Rosen, third base for Cleveland. One of your tougher uh, name some American League MVPs. For, you know what I mean? Like that'd yeah. be one of the last ones you'd get to. Yeah, and. That was the year before they went to the World Series and yeah. lost to the Giants. And yeah. uh, But he was so good and he was so terrific. consistent. Yeah. And he's a little bit forgotten. You're right. And, yeah. Yeah, he deserves his cred on That's right. That's right. August 21st. I'm going to take us way back to 1883. Oh. This is when the Philadelphia Quakers, later known as the Phillies, uh, lost 28-0 to to the Providence Grays. It was the Quakers' inaugural season. Oh, that was a tough one too, Sandy. That's okay. Uh, it was their first season. And they finished it with a 17 to 81 record. Great adjustment. So 140 years later, this loss remains the most lopsided in franchise history, 28 to zero. Wow. Yep. Now I do want to say, if, if you listen to this podcast, you may go, wait a second, the Philadelphia Quakers, a few episodes ago, we were saying that they were an NHL team. And that is true as yeah. well. The Philadelphia Quakers were also an NHL hockey team in 1930 and 31. And the year before that, they were the Pittsburgh Pirates. Right. Yeah, okay. Again, an NHL hockey team. Yeah. Back back in the day, they they tended to do that. They, they were, you know, the New York Giants, there was football and baseball, yeah. the St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah. They seemed to want to, yeah. like, they didn't they didn't want to stretch uh, with the names too much. Yeah, everybody can have the same name. Yeah. Do you know, uh, prior to the, the Pittsburgh Pirates, the baseball team, uh, they became the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1891. Do you know what they were prior to that? Do you remember? Ooh, Puritans. The Pittsburgh Alleghenies. Oh, well, that, oh. I would not have known. Anyway, no, this was know. the Philadelphia Quakers, who later became the Phillies. Uh, they lost 28 nothing. All right. All righty. Uh, 2000. <laughs> 2000. Tiger Woods defeated David May in a three-hole playoff to win the PGA Championship at Valhalla Golf Club in Louisville, Kentucky. It was his second straight PGA Championship and his third major title in that calendar year, a feat that had last been accomplished in 1953 by Ben Hogan. So you're in pretty rare air mm -hmm. there. It's part of the intro, you know. You, Thank you. I, I referenced it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. See, we're good. We're checking these off. It's well, good. Well, you know, speaking of the intro, uh, in 1974, The Longest Yard, a movie comedy starring Burt Reynolds and Bernadette Peters, opened in theaters in New York City. And that was uh, 1974. Wow. The film about a former NFL player recruiting a group of prisoners in a jail for a game against the prisoners, prison's guards, former NFL players like Ray Nitschke and Joe Cap also appeared in the movie as prisoners. The movie won the Golden Globe that year for hmm. Best Musical or Comedy and was nominated for three others as well. It has a 78% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and was remade in 2005. That was uh, with Adam Sandler in the lead role and co-starred Reynolds as a retired player. When the film was originally released in Great Britain, it was released under the name Mean Machine, if you want to just check your wow. British credits. Mm -hmm. yep. And it was shot in the Georgia State Prison with the cooperation of then-Governor Jimmy Carter. 
Oh, great see? facts. And Mike dig dug out those facts. Oh, Mike man. deserves wow. credit for those facts. A lot of, a lot of facts. <laughs> a lot of great facts there. <laughs> well, you know, we're we're content light today. I we had to go were. deep. Oh, uh, Pittsburgh man. Alleghenies. Thank you. <laughs> Matt, you got some more facts? <laughs> I do. In 2006, the LA Kings announced they will retire uniform number 20 to honor left winger Luke Robitaille. In 14 years, over three different stints with Los Angeles, just with Los Angeles, Robitaille was an 11-time All-Star. He scored 557 goals and had 597 assists. Just again, in L.A. Again, just in L.A. Like, yeah, he, wow. had, he had 668 goals total, but just with L.A., he mm-hmm. had over 500 goals. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. It is. Uh, the Kings have retired seven uniform numbers, I okay. believe. Uh, Marcel Dion, Gretzky, yep. Blake, Taylor, Vauchon. Uh, Robotai and Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown, yeah. Yeah, I think I wouldn't have guessed the seventh one. I think yeah. Dustin Brown has, I think it's because of the longevity. He, he yeah, yeah. I, I, I get it when you mm-hmm. say it. I just kind of, I don't know if I'd have guessed that one. If you, I would not have guessed that. I might have guessed Dave Taylor first or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next one. Uh, 1986. The Red Sox defeated Cleveland 24 to 5 at Cleveland Stadium. Boston shortstop Spike Owen, who was batting ninth in that game, became one of just 13 players in MLB history to score six runs in a nine-inning game. Three more have done it since then. Boston scored 11 runs with two outs in the sixth inning alone. Other players to score six times in a game, Sean Green. You remember had the uh, he set the all-time total bases record. He had four home runs. Yep. Uh, Edgardo Alfonso, Johnny Pesky, Joe Randa, and Mel Ott, the Hall of Famer. Yep. Is the only guy to ever do it twice, and he did it ten years apart in 1934 and 1944. Mel Ott references, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I tell you what, I think a lot of people know Mel Ott because of crosswords. Cross. I was yeah, just going to say sure. you're going to find that guy Giant a lot. Slugger. You're going to find, yeah. or you're going to find. Yeah, Ott. Isn't there a lot. They love the yeah, Ott. Yeah. Sure. If you get a odd name or a, a bunch <laughs> of or yeah. short, 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 yeah, short, yeah. there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Ott yeah. and or triumphant in crosswords. Sure. <laughs> and and it's scoring a half dozen runs. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. Uh, and look at this. In uh, 1977, Andy North won his first PGA Tour event with a final round 71 of the Westchester Classic in Harrison, New York, to beat runner-up George Archer by two shots. The win was the only time North won a PGA event that wasn't a major. His only other two wins, not bad, 78 and 85 U.S. Opens. Andy North getting a little love here on uh, This Day in Sports from 1977. Hmm. Huh. I'm going to go to 2006 again. I was there with the LA Kings, but in 2006 at the Rogers Cup in Montreal, 49-year-old Martina Navratilova won her 177th WTA doubles title, her final one, pairing with Nadia Petrova of Russia to defeat Kara Black and Anna Lena Gronfeld. Uh, 6-1, 6-2 in the finals, I believe it was. 49 years old. That's incredible, I think. It is. Yeah. No debate about uh, it. Martina Navratilova may come up again in our draft portion. Yeah, that kind of inspired us because we thought, you know, there's never been a a biopic of Martina Navratilova. No. I think you have, like, some of these bigger characters that never had a biopic, so this is going to definitely inform our draft. Uh, although I think I mentioned it before, the 30 for 30 where her and Chris Everett are uh, hanging out. Weird. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did bring this up. Oh, it's so up. weird. That's it's the, the title kinda, of it. They weird. Kinda, kind of making like a Thelma and Louise thing. They're driving around yeah. a convertible. It's weird. And, and I'll like, ask you the same thing I asked last time. So you recommend it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I believe you answered the same uh, thing I, last time. I don't how think do I make, say this? It doesn't make the top <laughs> no. 30 of my 30 for 30. Oh. If you want to put some Dran Dran on and just kick back and... <laughs> I'm just going to leave that. <laughs> Mike, here up. Let that go. Just be quiet for a sec. Uh, my last one here, 2004. Nicholas Massu and Fernando Gonzalez defeated German pair Nicholas Kiefer and Rainer Schuttler to win the gold medal in men's doubles tennis at, at the Athens Olympics. It was the first Olympic gold medal win in Chile's history. Oh. The next day, Massu defeated Marty Fish of the U.S. in five sets to win another gold medal. They remain the only two gold medal medals ever won by a Chilean, despite over a century of Olympic participation. Isn't that something? That is. That is something. You I wouldn't. Never... Th- I mean, Chile. Chile's there's big cities. There's sure. a lot of people. Yeah, there you, is you, a lot of people. Yeah. 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 My brother lives there. That's right. Yeah, that place has got a lot of people. There's a lot. Of, yeah, right. Like they're not sure. You know, it's not like you know some remote yeah. country that has only a couple of thousand people. No. Like uh, that's really surprising. I know that they couldn't even get a medal in like say a uh, soccer or something. Like but that. imagine how popular that guy is. Legend Nicholas Masu. He doesn't yeah. buy a beer. That guy doesn't buy a beer. No. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, in 2020, American Scotty Scheffler became the 12th player in history to break 60 during a PGA tournament when he made birdies on four of his final five holes wow. for a score of 59 during the second round of the Northern Trust at TPC Boston. And 59 is the lowest score that's ever been scored on any of these courses. And 59 is like the legendary number. Yeah. If you, if you get, and someone had it recently yep. uh, in the live tournament. And that is like, that is the number that often gets referenced in golf that people may not know about when they often talk about a super 59 or 59 comes up a lot. That is the reason. Cause that is the score that has never been, no one's ever shot an 18 hole lower than 59. No, nope. really not on record. No, like no. unofficially, I think people have sit, claimed it happened. Sure, but, but yeah, not in a PGA event. Number. No, that's I don't the think number. So. That's yeah. insane. And, and it is. Frank, what are you hitting Frank, out there? Frank, you, you check that for us. I'm checking it out right now. See if somebody got Frank, a 58. Frank's going to contradict you right now. Yeah. I, actually, somebody hit a 55. Oh, man. But I do think that's being in the zone, though, making birdies on four of your final five holes. That's oh, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's pretty clutch. Uh, should so, we go to quick hits? Have we covered everything now? Matt, feeling good? I'm feeling great. Quick hits. All right. Yeah. We're moving on. All right. I'll, I'll go, I got a quick hit for you here. Um, in 1990, Boston acquired forward Ken Hodge Jr. from Minnesota in exchange for a future fourth-round pick. Hodge scored 36 goals for the Bruins in two seasons, but was out of the NHL by age 26. The Stars used that fourth pick to select Yeri Lettinen, who won three Selkie trophies and was a key member of Dallas's Stanley Cup winning team in 1999. Yeah, was he ever. That, that worked out. Uh, 1977, in his re first return to Shea Stadium after being traded just two months earlier, Cincinnati pitcher Tom Seaver struck out 11 of his former Mets teammates and allowed just six hits as his Reds defeated New York 5-1. to one. After winning three Cy Youngs and 198 games with the Mets, Seaver was traded to Cincinnati for four players. And in six years with the Reds, Seaver won 75 games and finished in the top four for NL Cy Young voting twice. And what do you call that? What? Quick hit! Quick hit! Yep. Quick hit! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, 1984, in the biggest upset of that year, number one ranked John McEnroe lost to 30-year-old VJ Amritra, who was ranked 104 in the world at the time, in the first round of the ATP Championships in Cincinnati, Ohio. McEnroe lost just two other matches that entire calendar year. He finished 82-3 and three wow. in 1984. Quick hit! Quick hit! Quick hit! 2008. Okay, I'm going to take a rent this name. Daniel DeBruin, I think is how you pronounce it. Daniel DeBruin scored seven goals as Netherlands upset the U.S. 9-8 in the gold medal match in women's water polo at the Beijing Olympics. See what I mean about content? Like, we're talking Incredible water polo now. Water it's great. Polo. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm Thank getting you. water polo. It's fantastic. We've never had water Thank polo. Quick splash. So oh, quick splash. Yeah, see? Good. Quick yeah. hit. Big splash. Okay. Uh, 2008. Quick hit. Americans Misty May Trainer and Kerry Walsh defeated the Chinese duo Tian Jia and Wang Ji 21-18-21-18 to win the gold medal in women's beach volleyball at the Beijing Olympics. It was their second consecutive Olympic gold. Now we got beach volleyball as Holy well. Cow. Yeah. Let's get back to something a little more uh, regular. Uh, 19, <laughs> yeah. uh, 1975. Quick hit. Quick hit. <laughs> quick hit. <laughs> Can't get up there. Hey. Un unanimous. 1975. <laughs> quick hit, bro. At Wrigley Field, Cub starter Rick Ruschel goes six and two third innings, and his brother Paul throws the last two thirds as Chicago defeats the Dodgers 7 0. They became the first brothers in MLB history to combine for a shutout. Quick hit. Bro, any birthdays, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have some birthdays. You know, in 1912, let's go way back there, Canadians legend and Hall of Famer in the NHL, Toe Blake, was born in Victoria Mines, Ontario. Do you know why he's called Toe? Uh, no. Uh, as a toddler, his sister, I guess, pr couldn't pronounce Hector. His, his real name's uh. Hector. Uh, came out Hector. And uh, uh, game toe, toe Blake. That'll do it. Interesting that he didn't want to outgrow that as, you know, he grew up. I'm sure his sister eventually I mean, that's the story. That's a story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that sounds, that sounds believable. I believe it. That was yeah, it, eh? Stuck. Yeah. yeah, stuck. When you had a nickname back then, it, that was it. Yeah. Frank, you ever nickname? Ever nickname? No. no. Never a nickname? Yeah. Like, we got hey, Frank a nickname. That new haircut's going to get you a nickname pretty yeah. quick. It's Friends, not. anyone watching, listening, send in your, your, your uh, suggestions for Frank's nickname. Big Sexy is the first one. <laughs> uh, okay, 1924, Hall of Fame Cardinals broadcaster Jack Buck was born in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Jack Buck, of, Jack Buck? <laughs> Jack Buck, of course, part of our uh, opening sequence, that oh, quote, uh, yeah. I do not believe what I, I just, just saw. saw. Yes. One of the all-time great uh, baseball broadcasters. Did he have any sons? 
<laughs> no. Yes. Oh, did he? He sure did. Uh, 1959, happy birthday, longtime NFL quarterback Jim McMahon in, New, in Jersey City, New Jersey. That guy could rock a headband. Oh, could he ever? Like a terry cloth headband. Oh, man. Seri- and and looked so good. Serious badass. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. McMahon yeah. was great. Yeah. Uh, 1969, uh, three-time Canadian champion <laughs> why did you have that? Why did you finish Jeez. that with a question mark? <laughs> 1969? <laughs> uh, just, it's just coming in over the wire. Old man voice. <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> we got it. And in 1969, oh. three-time Canadian figure skater uh, championship, champion figure skater... <laughs> Jose Schwinar was born in Montreal. Very good. Very good. Great job. Uh, <laughs> 1986, eight-time Olympic gold medal, gold medal winning sprinter Usain Bolt mm. is born in Jamaica. One of my favorite athletes of all time. I yeah. love that he eats like 50 chicken McNuggets the day before a race like and just still crushed people. He was unbelievable. To only be able to do that. Yeah. I oh, mean, that's enough for me. Unbelievable. Uh, happy birthday, 1987. Six-time All-Star World Series winner, J.D. Martinez in Miami, Florida, kids. <laughs> Miami, Florida, 1987. J.D. Martinez. Same day, 1987. Five-time WNBA All-Star, two-time WNBA champ, Dewana Bonner was born in Fairfield, Alabama. Uh, and w- one more birthday I've got here, he, fairly significant one, 1936 Hall of Fame NBA center Wilt Chamberlain, born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Never mind this no content. That's a big one. That's a big one. Now, I'll tell you what, one more birthday because we're heading into the old uh, fantasy football season, 1993, four-time Pro Bowl wide receiver Mike Evans in Galveston, Texas. Yes. Now, friends, we talked earlier about... Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I want to just oh. circle back to the lowest yeah. round of golf. Oh, God. Yeah. I am so sorry. So, in men's major championship, the lowest round is 62 by Brandon Grace at the 2017 Open Championship. But he had 59. Yeah, so... That's incorrect. I, Frank's looking on a Frank. different internet. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, what internet are you on? <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Frank. Uh, no, there's been there's been 59s. Like there, yeah. Yeah. Was there ever 58, though? We were no, talking recently. I don't think no? so. I, 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 no, there, that's only been rumored. Yeah. Well, Bryson DeChambeau at 58 at Live Golf. Oh. Ah, exists three. Okay. That's the guy who just did it. Sorry, 58 is the number. He That is actually correct. For live, he did it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, Frank, you were wrong, then you were right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it. He's Frank, playing. I'm f- sick of f- Frank's head games. I just <laughs> want to get Frank a nickname and throwing all these yeah. ideas out. What Big sexy. Fake yeah, yeah. stats. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. Fake stats. Fake stats. Frank Russo. That's his nickname. Uh, all right. So, we yeah. talked about Martina Navchilova. We talked about biopics. Yeah. So, we thought, why don't we get uh, an actor who has... Who has played a sports figure yep. to give us his uh, his the, the people he wants to see uh, the biopics he wants to see? Ca- we have to cast them. Yeah, we got to cast these actors. A biopic that's never been made, by the way. Yeah, these are biopics he wants to see made. Yes, and and, and our job in yes. this draft is to choose the actors we think should play that person in their biopic. Is that that's correct? exactly yeah. it? So we've been given our challenges. Uh, I'm going to just uh, uh, read the list we've been given. Okay. And uh, see what we've got here. Uh, this is going to be. Uh, do I should I say who are who are judges? Sure. And that's a good point. That yeah, if he bails on us, we'll, he'll be dead to us. <laughs> well, uh, in uh, in, the, in the movie Moneyball, mm. Mark Shapiro was played by Reed Diamond. So we've got Reed Diamond jumping in with these. This on is the show requested nice. who he thinks we should be uh, casting. He has given us a list, and this is the people we have to cast: uh, Ronda Rousey. Scotty Pippen, Martina Navratilova, Reggie Jackson, and then he said, "If you're going to be cast Reggie, I want to see someone as Thurman Munson, as like a co-star." Yeah, that yep. was a sort of bonus co-star. That's, a, that's an awesome idea. So those are the the, the names that Reed has given us, and okay. we have to now cast them. Now yep. we have a draft order here. I believe Matt's going, or your Mike's going first. I'm going first. Mike's going first. Matt second. second. I'll go third. Yeah, and you can draft to whoever you want at any point. But okay. you're going to have to fill that roster essentially for Reed, and we're going to see what he thinks of this. Yes, indeed. So okay. we each need an actor for each role. For okay. each role, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, uh, it's me first, and I'm going to go with the Ronda Rousey uh, feature film. Yep. Which I I think we will we will just in my film it's called Rowdy. Thank you. That's oh, that's name, great. That's a title bonus nice. there. I, I didn't. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to choose a former child acting prodigy, and now full fledged adult and nice actor Abigail Breslin. Okay. I don't know if you've seen Abigail Breslin lately, but she doesn't not look like Ronda Rousey. And I think she's got the chops to do the part. Uh, and I like her a lot. She can be funny. She can be do the drama yeah. stuff. 
Uh, so that's my pick. Abigail Breslin, oh, Ronda Rousey. Now, before we move on, Frank, we're going to get some hot uh, images up here for the YouTube uh, viewers, right? Yeah, we can yeah, yeah. Be fantastic. That, yeah. So people will be able to see the, the real person. Was she and the in Little player. Miss Sunshine? Yeah, she was the kid yeah. in Little yeah. Miss Sunshine, but yeah. she's grown up now, and she's a nice actor, and I think she could do it. Great pick. Yeah. Okay, I'm second. I'm going to cast our first Martina Navratilova. Okay. And I am casting Amy Ryan. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, okay. Wow. Amy okay, Ryan, sure. I think she can do it all. Uh, she can master the accent, I believe. Mm-hmm. She fooled Ben Affleck in Gone Baby Gone with her Boston accent. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, Amy Ryan is my Martina Navratilova. Very good. Great choice. Great choice. All right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and just cast Reggie Jackson right now. Sure, yeah, yeah. And uh, we've talked to a couple of uh, current actors, actresses here. I'm going to go back a little bit. Oh. Carl Weathers. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I can Carl, it. yeah. Carl Weathers is going to be my so Reggie Jackson. This film will be filmed. <laughs> you know, I see it. Yeah. In, in 1970. We're going to go back in time. Yeah, I understand. Okay. And I just want that. to say. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. I just want to say, I, I think he can do it. Yeah, I sure think he he's can. the right guy. Sure he he has the right attitude of it. He's a great actor. Uh, so I'm going to go with. You know, uh, he yeah. still looks great. Yeah. He's, he's got a I was white, just going to say, he could beard. probably do it now. Still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know at what point of the life you're filming this. You get to be Apollo Creed. You get to be. Yeah, Reggie maybe, Jackson. and maybe, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. so yeah, Reggie Jackson, <laughs> uh, that's a great pick. That's a great one. Uh, okay, it's to me, and I am going to cast the Scotty Pippen film. Nice. And I'm going to take, again, I took him in another draft, Mahershala yeah. Ali. Yeah, yeah, he was on yeah. Because he played he's college basketball. Yeah, yeah. He now, he's a two-time list. Oscar winner. Obviously, he can handle whatever you put in front of him. I think he's a like one of our great young actors now. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to take Mahershala Ali as Scotty Pippen. The Green Book. Definitely, yeah. definitely was on my list. Yeah. Gosh. Okay. True Detective too. I didn't know he did True Detective. Yeah. He, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm up. I'm going to cast my Reggie Jackson, and I'm going to take David Diggs. Yeah. Uh, so the originator of the dual roles of the Marquis de Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. He's yep. awesome. You know, he's. I think big also, sexy likes it. Born in yeah. Oakland. And uh, he was recruited for his track skills, uh, so he he's got wheels. I think that uh, that's that's who I'm playing. All right. Reggie Jackson, David like Diggs. It. I like it. Has he got the height? He's six feet. Yeah, yeah Reggie's six right. feet, yeah. and David Diggs six feet. They're both six feet tall. All right. Uh, okay. Well, I've got my Reggie. I'm gonna get my Thurman. Oh yeah, Miles Teller. Oh, Miles Teller okay. is gonna that's play good. I like that. Yeah. Thurman Munson. He can rock a mustache. We've seen this happen. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he yeah. gotta have a good chop. Yeah. And I'm gonna go with Miles Teller. I think Miles Teller. The problem is we have to film his parts now and Carl Weathers uh, 30 years ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> but if we could, yeah. somehow, that's fine. it would be Carl Weathers that's and Miles fine. Teller. It, it all works. <laughs> you get uh, some CGs. You know, oh, yeah, like, you got yeah. that. CG mustache. Um, okay, I'm going to cast my... Uh, Reggie Jackson's been cast already, so I'm going to get my uh, Thurman Thomas in. And I'm going to go... Thurman Munson. Or, did I say Thurman Thomas? <laughs> oh, <you're going laughs> different Thurman rogue. Film. Different film. No. <laughs> Thurman Munson, pardon me. Uh, and I'm going to pick uh, Woody Harrelson to oh, play Thur- oh. Thurman Munson. Now, he could probably pair with Carl Weathers You can get reasonably. there in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. But uh, I think Woody Harrelson can do a lot. I think he'd be a great kind of salty counter to funny. whoever uh, played Reggie. So uh, I'm going with Woody Harrelson to play Thurman Munson. Interesting. And not Thurman Thomas. Thank you. Just but, also, but also he could. Yeah, sure he could. I'm gonna, I can do a great actor. I'm going to round out Thurman Munson and just uh, get mine on the board here. I'm taking Jesse Plemons. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Jesse Plemons, That's of course, pick. of uh, uh, Friday, Friday Night, Night Lights, Lights fame. Of everything. Fame, a few, uh, few other things as well. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to circle back into uh, Martina Navratilova land. Mm-hmm. And I've got a few good ones, I feel, in I, my personal okay. opinion. But I think I think this this is someone who could. I, I, I want to go one way or the other. You know what I'm doing? It Claire Danes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going Claire Danes. Right, I see right. it somehow. I see it. It's going to take a little bit of uh, makeup. Yeah, but sure. I feel like she has the toughness, and I think she could pull it off. I think she's uh, could do it, and I, I may regret she, it because that other good choice. She certainly has the intensity. But I thought the intensity is there. Yeah, I could yeah. do it. I agree. Interesting choice. Okay. Yeah. 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 Good challenge. Uh, okay, so I'll, I, I've only got two left, and they're both down to the last picks of those. So I'm gonna, I'll take my Martina Navratilova, yeah. who I, I doubt my pick was your other one. I think this is a little surprising too, but I'm gonna take Saoirse Ronan. Oh, that's, that's uh, on my list. who I no. think is just excellent. Yeah, and has the kind of physical length and like she's long and lean, like Martina was. 
I think she'd love the challenge of the accent, you know, and stuff like that. I think she could do it. Uh, and I just think she, I like her taste in films. Didn't even think of it. She'd hmm. want screenplay approval. Yeah. Uh, and, and that matters. Yeah. Anyway, so Saoirse Ronan to play Martina Navratilova. Uh, I'm going to take my Ronda Rousey, and I am going to cast Julia Stiles. Oh, I thought about her. I honestly Yeah, did. she looks yeah. like, yeah. yeah, that was on my list too. She played some soccer. There's some uh, athletics there. She can kick. That's pretty yeah. much the same Actually, as MMA. She, she, very, she, very <laughs> she dabbled. I got, I got Frank likes it. No, she looks very similar to her. Yeah, yep. sure. that was. The, I definitely thought about her. That was a good choice. Yeah, yeah, but can well, she throw an armbar? Well, that's it. Well, listen up. I'm going for an Oscar here, Frank. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. Ronda Rousey, start the by campaign. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, I had her. Yeah, yeah. Going she was there, on the list. She I feel like we're going to win an Oscar. She's here. not going to win. She's already won. We're going to, we're going to listen. Listen! <laughs> <laughs> I just think she can do it. I think she'd train. I think she would come off as a, a, a tough enough to do that. And I feel like that's a... She's going all the way for the Oscar right there. I think you just lost the draft. Uh, I'll be leaving. <laughs> out the window. Okay. Um, I'm going to take for my Reggie Jackson. Now, I'm, I'm doing a bit like you. I'm yeah. not going quite as far back. But I'm going to take uh, Jamie Foxx. I think Jamie Foxx can do anything. I thought about it. Yeah. I think he's... His range is incredible. We've seen him do funny stuff. We've seen him do dramatic stuff. Uh, I think he's an incredible mimic, too. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I yeah. think if he spent some time with Reggie, he could really do Reggie, which I think would be a big part of this. Like, yeah. you'd want to you'd want to see his characteristics. And I think Jamie Foxx mimicry makes him uh, a good pick for it. So that's my pick for Reggie Jackson is Jamie Foxx. I like it. I thought about it, too. Had you, have you picked a Scuddy Pippen? Yeah, Mahershala. Oh, yeah, Ali. of course. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I, that's my last one le left. I got to pick uh, Scotty Pippen. So uh, there's someone, I think Sandy's going to pick this person, but I think he's going <laughs> to play the other role in this movie. So I'm going to go with Melvin Gregg. Melvin Gregg. Melvin Gregg, uh, he's 6'2", which is good, uh, like like Mahershala Ali. But uh, So he's been on FX's Snowfall on American Vandal Season 2, yeah. and uh, he was in Steven Sodberg's uh, High Flying Bird. So great actor and a convincing basketball player. Like he has played basketball yeah. player before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my that's my pick. Well, guys. Or Scotty that's, nice, that's an ominously quiet response. You <laughs> no, no. I think it, I just hadn't thought about it. I was like, okay, yeah, I can see that. Um, guys. Guys. Here we go. We're getting an Oscar already. Okay. And we're, we're gonna get greedy. You're here. not. You're gonna you're not gonna believe you're not this. Getting an Oscar. You're not gonna believe you're this. Not gonna an Oscar. Guys, you're not gonna you're believe not even gonna get a You're not gonna you're believe not, it. Yeah. You're not gonna believe who's gonna make a comeback playing Scotty Pippen. Who's this? Will Smith. Oh, oh. Okay. oh okay. yeah. He's gonna make a comeback. He's gonna play uh Scotty Pippen. And it's going to be a hard hitting bio because it better it's, be. it's gonna dig hard on Jordan. And this is gonna be the this is gonna be the movie. That they stop. Well, if, talking. yeah, you know, What's if Scotty title? Pippen's going to give permission, talking. yeah, if yeah. Scotty Pippen's going to give permission to make yeah. his movie, it's going to dig Jordan. I got to do it, yeah. and I'm going to do it. And I need a guy who's controversial, who yeah, right, you know, right. Academy hates. Let's see if he can <laughs> go win. Let's see him win another Oscar. <laughs> so this we, draft is fantastic. Yeah, let me Brian. just let me just say, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. sure. What's that? Is he banned from the Oscars? Uh, yes. I, yeah. Yes. Sure. Sandy's planning Good on a on a triumphant return. But yes. did we all, did no one pick Michael B. Jordan because he's got to play Jordan, right? I thought about Michael B. Jordan. Uh, to, to Actually, I thought about Michael B. Jordan. I wonder if he could play Reggie, but he's too pretty, I didn't feel like the right guy. didn't feel like the right guy. But he could play Jordan just to be Jordan? Yeah, that's what I figure. Like, I figure he's, he's got to be Jordan in, in the Scotty Pippen movie. So they Michael say, B. Jordan. and Michael B. Jordan. You want you just wanted to say that in the preview. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't Michael want anything. B. No, Jordan. Jordan. <laughs> He'll be Jordan. Jordan. He'll be Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. <laughs> Jordan. Like, is Jordan. You just want the, like, the kind of wordplay? No, I just think, like, yeah. that would be good casting. You just want the voiceover, I think. Okay. Uh, I, I think do. Reggie sure. Jackson should play Michael Jordan. And Reggie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan. I think yeah, these were all great picks. They were great picks. And I think that uh, Reed did a great job of giving us a challenge here. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, there was not a lot of controversy. And we'll see what Reed thinks right now. Our guest judge today is best known for many roles, so many roles. But of course, we have such shows as Homicide, Life in the Street, where he was Detective Mike Kellerman. Uh, and and see, oh, season eight of 20, 20, 24, he came back with the, into the, uh, into the Kiefer Sutherland universe with Designated Survivor. He's in two seasons of that as well. Couldn't get enough Kiefer. Uh, he was Lawrence Dominic and Dollhouse, appeared on The Shield. Uh, well, of course, that's right. 
and the shield, but you're also in the Marvel universe with agents of shield. So you see, there's all these kind of like things with this guest where he does a little bit of this and that, but that kind of come together. Of course, uh, he was on bones the mentalist, Franklin and bash in the underground. Uh, that's amazing. And I also saw in, in, in uh, they may have been on some after school specials as a child. He is here with us today. Please welcome Mr. Reed diamond. Oh my gosh, guys. It's an honor yeah. to be here now, now. I can't actually right now. I can't confirm or deny if I've been in any of those things because that's I'm fair. not allowed to promote them right now. Oh, that's right. Oh, so, maybe. Maybe. And you know, Google search yourself. Uh, perhaps <laughs> that did happen, and perhaps there were. In, but you did say something very funny, though. A couple of after-school specials. Um, this is how you know. Um, I used Wikipedia for some of the stuff we did today, yeah. Yeah. and uh, Wikipedia is notoriously uh, incorrect. So yes. there is another actor uh, named yeah. Reed Diamond. Okay. And oh, he's, I the joined, he's yes, the no, kid. No, so and he he and I are the <laughs> exact same age, right? So when I was a kid. I would see him in movies. And speaking of sports, he was in Two Minute Warning. Do you remember Two yeah, Minute Warning? Yeah, Charlton yeah, Heston, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. he, and he looked like me, and then he'd done this after school special. And they played it at my public school at PS84 in New York when I was growing up. And so it's like 1976, 1977, which is some of the period of some of the athletes we'll talk about today. And I remember the, the kid, he, kind of, he looks like me, and then the credits come up, and it says Reed Diamond. And all these girls in like fifth grade who I was really into, they're like, they're like is that you? And I'm like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> and um, but it wasn't me, but it got me, it got, you know, it got me some action in fifth and sixth grade. Uh <laughs> so, and then when I joined SAG yeah. in 1985, the, my my incredible union that I love and, and support so much, I had to add my middle name for the first few years of my career because he was still in, and you can only have one person of the name. And then I I wrote him a letter once my career had sort of taken off. And and I said, Hey, do you mind? I know you I, it seems like you've retired. Would I ha could I have the name? And he graciously allowed me to have it. But I've 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 contacted Wikipedia even for a while. Like uh, yeah. IMDb had had it incorrect, but uh, there is another Reed Diamond. But anyway, there perfect. We go. So you're allowed to promote yeah. that Reed Diamond and things. That, that I, I'm a huge fan of his work. So if you want to hear anything about Two Minute Warning or Sarah's yeah. Summer of Swans or his appearance as a guest star in The Incredible Hulk with Bill Bixby, yeah. oh thank I you, I can tell you all about that. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> well, we were, were if you can't promote yourself, we're glad to promote you yeah. for you. So I want to say also the reason we talked about this early in the yeah. podcast, we wanted to have you here specifically for this was uh, we were talking about um, actors who have played real life sports right. figures. And of course, uh, you were in Moneyball as Mark Shapiro, and we wanted to have you here for for that reason. And then we said we're going to challenge you. You gave us this list of, uh, of of sort of biopics you'd like to see. Here's this sports figure. Can you cast this particular person? But before we get into the actual results of that that draft we had, that casting we have, tell us about that uh, Moneyball experience because uh, it's an interesting one. Well, as much as I could say, um, you know what's cool is like uh, as you'll glean from some of our conversation I imagine today is I'm I'm not really a, a very sports guy on sports I started theater early and I was always into acting and at a certain point you know in junior high school and high school I had to make the transition from theater to sports and uh, I mean I had a brief fantasy of baseball in the 70s during some of the, the period of you know the golden age of the Yankees that we may mm -hmm. talk about today but uh, uh, so when cast as a sports uh, uh, person uh, the, uh, in, in this movie that, that I'm not going to say the name of, but you did, um, <laughs> it, I, I, you know, there was Michael Lewis's great book, which I read. And but also, you know, I've never been a doctor and I've never been a lawyer, but I get to say all those words and live in those worlds. So I, I sort of viewed it in the same way. The only thing that I did bring to the table is on the first day of shooting, because it was the first scene that we shot on the first day. And uh, 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 they kept calling him Shapiro. And so I knew that it was Shapiro. And they said, really? And I go, it's interesting that we've had you've had so much time preparing this script and doing so much research and no one knows it. So that's that was I think that was my small country. I really that's probably the only reason I got the part was because uh, I knew how to pronounce <laughs> it's the not the only name. <laughs> <laughs> but what was what was funny, I mean, uh, you know, we can talk generally about it. What was so cool about it was uh, um Usually, so Aaron Sorkin had written the script, right? So it's obviously he's his bona fides are, are, are pretty well established. And I remember we had a rehearsal on the Friday because we shot it on the Monday. And on the Friday, we had a rehearsal with Brad Pitt and the director, uh, Bennett Miller. And um, Brad brought in uh, his own version of the script of the scene. And I thought, oh, God, because, you know, usually that's not going to go quite well if he's going to 
engorge his part and dilute and lessen mine as much as possible. That wasn't the case because this guy is the ubermensch of all times. And he he had he'd expanded the scene to many more pages and given me tons more to do, which was sort of, I mean, I've been lucky enough to work with two incredible men, George Clooney and Brad Pitt, who are just like, yes, people, what's the, the people say, uh, you know, women want to be with them, men want to be their friends, or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. you just, you die, and they're just the good, the best of the best. So, um, but then he had rewritten the scene and given me more to do. But then on the day, um, we improvised the scene for, for the entire day. So we cut, we shot Brad first. And we shot the movie on film, which w that was in the period where most people had transitioned to um, to digital. But uh, we had an incredible DP and we shot everything on film. And so we shot towards uh, Mr. Pitt first and uh, and we just improvised. And the director would sit underneath the camera and we would just we would riff until the, the, the film ran out to the mags ran out. They'd reload and we'd go again. And uh, I remember we, I mean, we improvised his, his side for like six hours and they got, some of them were really crazy because there was one point where I'm in the chair and we did a whole Star Trek riff because I said, I feel like Captain Kirk and these guys are the red shirts. And we went with that. And, <laughs> and the only reason it didn't make it in the movie ultimately is because they couldn't get the, uh, they couldn't get the rights to say it. But, uh, <laughs> but, but I remember going to lunch and and Miss Brad's there he because he didn't have to go to his trailer for lunch he's hanging out and then all the guys with the background guys are playing the other you know execs at um at the Indians they come up to me man you're killing it you killed it and I go I haven't it hasn't happened yet because yeah, right. we haven't shot me yet. yeah and I go I don't think I can as you know as an improviser I don't think I can improvise for another six hours but luckily we didn't when we turned around uh Bennett would just call out whatever favorite improv chain. He go All right, do the Kirk one, do this one, and do whatever we gave the cake. He gave them different sort of titles of each sort of thread or road we'd gone down, and we did it. And I think we did my coverage in about two hours, and it was magical. And it yeah. was one of those because I was uh, it, it, it in a weird way it changed it changed my career because I think from that one scene I didn't have to audition for maybe six seven years again. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and it's interesting. I mean, I love it. And I, uh, I love doing it. And uh, it was uh, but uh, it's uh, it's taken on a life of its own. I mean, look, at, it brought us here with with you guys. So that's I think that's that's reward enough. That's the, to, be on, to be on this that's, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. the win. It's, it's crazy because <laughs> the tagline of our podcast is women want them, but all the guys don't want to be friends with them. I think that's how we how we describe ourselves. Isn't that right, Matt? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think <laughs> the phrase is, is actually isn't it, uh, women want to men want to be them, women want to be with them. Is that right, right. Is, great? Yeah, that's right. it. That's the tagline yeah. of the part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's fascinating. I I know that there. If people are wondering why we're being cagey about it, there's a labor dispute right now, and 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 uh, union members can't promote movies. But um, can you can we ask you if you um, have you ever auditioned for an actual like an actual athlete, like where you'd have to play the sport in the movie. Yeah. So this, this is an excellent question. So, because what I love about the thought experiment about what we're doing today is, okay, if you're going to do a biopic about a famous athlete or a famous person, regardless, what period in their life are you picking? Because it's if, if it's sort of the cheesy TV movie, you go through the whole arc of their career. But what's more interesting, I think, in a more artistic film is you pick a period in that that athletes or that famous person's life and you really examine that small period because that way you don't have to put an actor in all this age makeup and etc and i think the second part that i find so interesting about this thought experiment is do you have to cast an actor who it can perform whatever athletic skills are required for that part because you hear all the stories about people who get in shape to play mma guys or you know are, are really good uh, at baseball etc but i um, I've actually, uh, and now I've actually lost roles because uh, that I that are that were going to go my way because of my lack of baseball skills or football, the ability to throw a football. My favorite one I remember, so I can promote this because I never made it into this movie. There was um, there was a baseball movie called Talent for the Game. Do you remember it? Yeah. Not Back in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Edward James almost, and then oh yeah, I remember it. Right, yes. it was about some hotshot hitter and. Uh, 
And I went in, it was in New York. I was, I was a young actor. I was starting out. I went in and I had my audition at wherever, you know, Warner Brothers, wherever the heck it was. And they were like, you're the guy. This is amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was really good. Just can you show up to the Sheep's Meadow in Central Park this weekend? We're going to do some baseball skills training. And they had all of these real baseball coaches and you know they've got they've got you throwing over here hitting over here running over here i think they 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 took me out after throwing and that was it i didn't even <laughs> i was just i was i just washed right out i scrubbed out and then so and then later years later i finally i got a pilot for nbc back when they made two hour pilots and uh it was to play um a major league pitcher and it was late in the pilot season because I used to have this technique when there used to be a thing called pilot season where you just had five auditions a day and they'd see everybody in Los Angeles and everyone in New York. And this was when I was living in Los Angeles. And so back in the early 90s, everything that I went up for on the breakdown, it said a Johnny Depp type. It was always a Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. And I'm the opposite of Johnny Depp in many ways, at least coloring and and so I would, I would always go, I'm so sorry. That sounds like me. Um, I would always wait until they'd sort of seen everybody in town. And then I go, I'd go in. So if it was the first day of casting, I wouldn't go. I'd say to my agents, just wait, let's let them see everybody. And if they've gone through all the Johnny Depp types, because it was, everyone was a Johnny Depp type. I was the only yeah. person who never showed up in a leather jacket and uh, you know, with my <laughs> hair slicked back. And so I, I got this incredible script. It was this incredible script for NBC. And acting wise, I got it. And the director, who was a uh, a baseball player himself, is like, let's go to the park and throw. And he's and I went with him. I, I mean, I couldn't I couldn't even get it over the plate. I couldn't get it to him. <laughs> I was so bad. And so I spent. It would have been an amazing experience, but I spent the entire time because there's no. It's not like a movie where there was time to prepare. Mm -hmm. They stuck me up in Vancouver. And luckily, one of the other actors coached Little League, and I would just be at the in the parking lot at the Sutton place in Vancouver, just practicing <laughs> my pitches. And yeah. then this was before CGI, because now I think you could you could fix this, right? You could just put somebody's face on somebody's body. But we we would do stuff where I I wind up because I didn't even know the I didn't even know the form. I, I would wind up and finally once I learned how to make it look like that, and then the camera would move behind me, and like a real baseball player would step in where I was and finish the pitch, right? Yeah. So it had the right speed and the right because you can't fake all of that. But luckily now. I've gotten old enough where I, I either get to play general managers or I just, I did a movie, which I can't talk about, but uh, where I got to play, um, uh, you know, a manager, a coach. So I'm down yeah. there on, the, so I'm really good at blowing bubbles and chewing gum in the dugout. <laughs> so that, that worked out well, but yes. So my, and oh, throwing footballs. It, I, I, there's so many times, anytime they have to do the, the sports audition before the acting audition, I don't even go. I didn't go <laughs> after that. Uh, it makes me think of uh, just quickly before we get into this draft, yeah. I was just thinking because uh, Matt and I had both read the book that was The Making of Bull Durham. And they were talking about right. an actor that there was, they were talking about an actor who was going to play the first baseman and he was smoking a cigar on first during the game they're playing. And they, they said, you, What are you doing? He's like, My character smokes a cigar during a game. They're like, No, no one smokes <laughs> no one a cigar <laughs> during a game. Is this is like Bull Durham's trying to be a little bit realistic. This is like right. major league. They're trying to, and the guy's like, No, I smoke a cigar. And they're like, Get rid of this guy. Like he's go. got, yeah. he's insisting that that's his character. <laughs> like it's never gonna happen. Man. I love that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so go. this is this is amazing. So we're gonna jump into this because Great. now we we we've, we've warmed up. We've talked a little bit about and stuff, and we have this list, and we're just gonna go uh, each through each of these different uh, roles. Okay. And see what you think about our choices. We don't want to tell you who our choices is until you've picked a winner in each category. Great. We're gonna start off with uh, Ronda Rousey. Uh, we have three actors, uh, actresses sent up here. We have Jennifer Lawrence, Abigail Breslin, and Julia Stiles. What do you think of these choices, Reed? Well, I mean, these choices are excellent uh, right out the gate. I mean, so do, do, do you want me to go through each one individually? or sure. Sure, okay, well, two, but I mean, great. first strikes you, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, well, because uh, you've... Uh, Abigail Breslin, what an interesting choice, right? That's kind of perfect. Now here's, because this is the interesting question, right? It, is that person going to do their own fighting? Which they probably would. So, mm -hmm. but this is a this is a choice role for any actress. But I think Abigail Breslin, I, I'm not feeling her. And, and Julia Stiles, I think might be, um, she might be a little older than, than because we're going to get Ronda Rousey coming up. We're going to get her sort of young and hungry and then maybe transitioning into uh, wrestling, right? And because that's what she's doing now, right? She's, yeah, yeah, she's wrestling. Yeah. But I mean, from that list, um, there's nothing Jennifer Lawrence can't do. 
And it seems, it seems, I mean, it seems custom made for her. Cause I was going to say like off the top of my head, originally just sort of physically, I was going to think, I was thinking Florence Pugh, oh, but she, and she'd done that wrestling movie. Right. So mm -hmm. she's got some of that, th those skills, but, and then I was thinking Dakota Fanning, but um, cause she's young and I know she would go for it. But I mean, I think you got a winner with Jennifer Lawrence. Cause I know, first of all, she's got the attitude. She's got. I, yeah. I would believe that she's a fighter. I believe she's a killer. I know she would get in incredible shape for it. And I think she'd bring the fun and the humor to that, to Rhonda as well. So I'm going to go just out of the gate, just hands down Jennifer Lawrence on that one. Okay. That's an early victory for me, guys. Don't, this is just the first, the first of five rolls coming up. <laughs> so don't get disappointed or, you know, feel bad. Um, really I feel like that's, this is going to be Jennifer Lawrence going for her Oscar on that one for sure. Now, oh, heck yeah. Stepping in next, uh, yeah. switching gears completely, Scotty Pippen. Yes. And Scottie Pippen, we have Melvin Gregg, Will Smith, and Mahershal Ali. Yes. So I I nominated Mr. Pippen because I feel like that's the biopic. I'm sorry, I, I lost my uh, version of it. But anyway, I, I wanted to see that one because obviously Michael Jordan, he's the hero in the story. But what makes Scottie Pippen so interesting is just the angst of always being in his shadow. So I feel <laughs> like... <laughs> the humor and the pathos of of that of 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 playing that character is it's 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 an actor's dream part. So um, go through. Can you? Because I just lost my list off my screen. I'm so going to no pull it up again. Uh, no say have, who we had again. This one we have Melvin Gregg, Will right? Smith, and Mahershala Ali. Yes. Okay. So these are excellent, excellent. Once again, there's my list. All right. Excellent, excellent choices. Um, so I wasn't familiar with Melvin Gregg, and then I looked him up, and now I think physically and age wise, I think now, but this also this this begs the question that we brought up earlier like, what period of Scotty Pippen's life are we going for? And this is your movie, okay? So you oh, can so, decide what you want to do with that. So and I think there's some time two, traveling to and we didn't know casting, we're yeah, like, yeah. we're putting yeah. this in your hands. So there's two <laughs> movies that I want to make in this. So, right, so if I'm making the original. Because I was going to go, I was even thinking originally, I was thinking maybe Michael B. Jordan for this yeah. part. You know, yeah. he could play him sort of in those that Bulls period and he would bring, but I loved your choices. So I think if we're doing young Scotty Pippen in the height of the Bulls, I got to go Melvin Gregg. But then I go, if I'm making my other movie <laughs> where it's a bitter, and then this is the movie. Now I'm pitching this right now out loud as we say, like sort of the, the angrier version, sort of almost like the um, like the just the um, the film negative version of the Michael Jordan documentary. And we have Scottie Pippen sitting in his house. So it's a comedy now. So Scottie Pippen sitting in his house going through his career. He's he's drinking, you know, just like uh, Jordan. He's drinking his his whiskey and he's smoking a cigar, but they're not as good cigars and it's not as good whiskey and it's not as nice house. And that's got to be Will Smith. So if we're going for my comedy version of the life and the bitter um, not, I'm not ascribing him to be better. Um, I'm just saying for our movie's purpose, um, for a, a screwball farce, um, I'm going to have to go with Will Smith. All right. This is going to be, his, I guess, essentially his comeback movie in a lot of ways. And if he's going for an Oscar, he won't be invited. Uh, <laughs> I, I do want to say, I, yeah. I was thinking, uh, we, or at least I don't I can't speak for the others, but like Michael B. Jordan, he would just have to play Jordan, right? Wouldn't he? Wouldn't you have to have him play Jordan in the Pippin movie? Yeah, God, I guess. Well, now if we're making that Pippin, he has to. So if we're doing if we're doing the the Melvin Gregg version, then we have Michael B. Jordan as Michael Jordan, right? And yeah. they just yeah, yeah. the B is silent, right? We we went through this a little bit <laughs> in the podcast. We were trying to sell the idea that Michael B. Jordan was just because Matt wanted the preview to say and Michael B. Jordan. And just no, like no, kind of had the Michael double. B. Jordan. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wants this. Well, uh, it to but, me. But, but, it, I, but you guys didn't. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. All right. That's it. So, okay. You know, well, I'm going to, I'm going to mend my movie then. We're going to make the movie just so we can do that. It's yeah. going to be, it's going to be uh, Melvin Gregg. Yeah. And as Scotty Pippen. So it's for, for the win, Melvin Gregg as Scotty yeah. Pippen and Michael B. Jordan. So Sandy, that's going to be controversial because I won as Will Smith, and now Matt won because he brought up another version of what he wanted to do. So <laughs> that's we're going to give the game it to plays, me. man. Well, give me that's, the point, yeah. but you know he'll get him. Uh, okay. okay, Martina Navratilova. We yes. have uh, Saoirse Ro Ronan. Am I saying yeah. it right? I would say it right. Saoirse Ronan. Thank you, Saoirse Ronan. Amy Ryan, yeah. Claire Danes. Ah, oh, 
this is really good because I, Martina is such an interesting figure and that's where I picked her. I mean, she was there at the height of, of, of women's tennis. And then she was out early and an advocate before yeah. it was really cool. I mean, one of the first, and, and also such an interesting uh, backstory about, you know, being uh, defecting and not being allowed to return to the country of her birth during that period. Right. So she's had an amazing story and she's continued to be an amazing woman. Uh, so Claire Danes, Incredible actor, uh, Amy Ryan. Oh, these are all everyone you guys picked are master thespians. Amy Ryan, who doesn't love Amy Ryan? But I think we have to do the late seventies, early eighties. <laughs> Martina Navratilova, and I mean Saoirse Ronan. There's nothing she can't do. But I feel like I feel like we should call her or call her agents and get her on this because Martina's written a biography, right? An autobiography. She's perfect. Oh, yeah. Is that perfect? Yeah. yeah. And she is, I mean, she is, she's perfect for this. Even just, we can make her, she, she'll sort of look like her once we dye her hair really dark and, and it's an actor's role and we can deal with the, the rivalry with Chris Everett or Steffi Graf yeah. and then all of her personal struggles. And that's a, and that's another, that's a, she'll be accepting an Oscar um, with the uninvited uh, Will Smith. Who, sorry. Was, yeah. We didn't pick him. It's, now it's we did, and then we did. I'm so Matt, sorry, Sandy. Matt, did you yeah. want to jump in and try to get Amy Ryan picked, or are you good with this? No, no, <laughs> you know, we're all on the board. I do think if you look at Amy Ryan, she does look a lot like Martin. Oh, heck yeah. If we're doing one now, because that would be, but I really, but I, I, I don't want to take the win away from, from Mike. No, I feel it has to be Sersha. <laughs> who, who was Sersha's pick? I mean, who picked yeah. Sersha? Uh, Mike did. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. now you know, it's we sprinkled the whole infield here. Yeah, Everyone's yeah. gotten a bit of it. That's fantastic. Yeah, Everybody is on tenterhooks listening to this, waiting to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. They just on can't tenter. wait. Uh, yeah. Sir Sharon that... Martin Navratilova. Gotcha. But actually, but I got to say, like, uh, that was uh, one of my favorites of the people you threw out there to cast. I thought that was a really interesting one. I think you're right. That definitely could be the movie, ready to rock. Like, yeah, that's great. I think that's yeah. yeah. And fascinating at any kind of like you could take any sort of portion of her life at any age and you kind of want to see all all chapters, you know, exactly. he's not going to pick Amy Ryan. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, we're moving on. This is kind of a two part, but uh, right. let's start with the first part. The uh, straw that stirs the drink. Reggie Jackson. Mm -hmm. We have Carl Weathers, Jamie Foxx and David Diggs. Those are three choices here for Reggie. Uh, well, so this is, as a, a New Yorker, my father worked at Channel 9, WOR, so they covered the Mets. So for the first, from probably four years old to about eight, I just went to Mets games. I'd go to them anytime, but also anyone could go, because I remember going to the Mets games in the <laughs> early 70s. Where yeah. and I'm I'm not kidding you. There'd be 500 people there sitting in the stands, and we usually go to see other people. Like I went there once. I remember to go see Hank Aaron play because the Braves were up yeah. there. So and I didn't really understand who he was, but I knew who he was, and I knew that he was a superstar. So we went to see him play, and I guess Tom Seaver was pitching for a little while. But then when I switched schools, I switched allegiances and became a Yankee fan at the, sort of the right time, 76, 77, 78, when yeah. they're, when they're not, I mean, and still to this day I, at my dad's house, I have my Mickey Rivers bat from bat Amazing. day. Yeah. And those are the only, those are the only uh, sports figures whose names I really remember, but it was, but I was obsessed. Well, so Reggie Jackson was the star. And then the person we'll talk about next, I was obsessed with, but Reggie Jackson was, and such a, what I love about this period of, I mean, these guys you know, we're coming off the the sixties athletes who are, you know, I love those puckful stories of Mickey Mantle being wasted at, at the 21 club and then you know, hitting it yeah. out of the park the next day. Yeah. And Reggie Jackson and, and, and cause Billy Martin was the manager at the time and he uh -huh. was a character, right. And Reggie Jackson just had that. He, he just had this star quality, but he, he's so unlikely with the, you know, wearing the glasses and it was just, but he 44, right. That was, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah. so yeah. yeah. So Reggie Jackson, an icon it needs to be a story. So these picks are great. Um, <laughs> you know, Carl Weathers is really interesting uh, because uh, I feel like, I feel he may even be older than Reggie Jackson. Well, uh, it's the, that's the era choice. You have to put him in his prime when he does it. So we're thinking like his Apollo Creed era. You know. Oh, are we allowed to put? We're allowed to put the actor in their prime. In Anywhere you want them. Oh, yeah, uh, anywhere you want them. There's no rules here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's oh, well, oh, well, if I could put, okay, so let's go in reverse then. David Diggs, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. No offense to Mr. Diggs. Uh, Jamie Foxx is, is a brilliant choice because 
well, first of all, Jamie Foxx could pay, play Martina Navratilova. There's nothing that Jamie Foxx can't do. Not only could he play Martina Navratilova and Ronda Rousey at the same time, he'd do a musical number that would take yeah. bring the house down. So, sure. of course, Jamie Foxx has had enough success. He is doing fine. He survived whatever horrible medical thing we don't we're not allowed to know about. He's fine. So, if I can pick now that I didn't realize I could time travel with my actors, oh, this is amazing. So, 100% Carl Weathers in his prime <laughs> as prime Reggie Jackson. <laughs> Boom. Done. I just want to point out that he also started a movie Action Jackson. So, I mean, he's oh, on his way. He's already oh, on his way. Action. And oh, Carl Weathers is also has the dubious distinction of being uh, beating up stunt players. Um, I don't oh, hope I'm, I'm not saying anything. I, I out didn't of, know that. I've only heard that from stunt players. So I, I don't know that it's true. Whoa, I'm yeah. not saying. But um, he 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 was in he apparently is in the sort of the. Um, in that school of uh, of perhaps being a little rough with um, some of his, of the stuntmen. Okay, so this is tough because now if you are Carl Weathers as Reggie Jackson and you got to recreate the fight in the Fenway dugout with exactly. Billy Martin, the guy who's Billy Martin is shitting his pants because he's about to get really beat up. He, he knows it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, yeah. in the he, Steven he's Seagal man, school. Still yeah. Get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. And who would just for um, S's and giggles? Okay, because so we've got Carl Weathers yeah. in his prime. Who would you guys cast as Billy Martin? That's what I was just thinking there. I was trying to remember the part. That's such a great I was, part. I was trying to remember when, in, in, but in in uh, the Bronx is burning. It was uh, mm. what's his nuts? Uh, Barton Fink. What's his, his name? Is escaping? Oh, John that. Turturro. John Turturro wasn't he? Right? Wasn't he Billy Martin oh, in the wow, Bronx? Okay. Burning? I haven't seen it. I think it was. That was yeah. he was good as Billy Martin. Yeah. Think, whoever was Billy Martin in that movie was great. I think He's it might have been Turturro. But that's a that's a great part. You need Frank. That to was go back when managers uh, could just be so yeah. horrible. Yeah. Smoking. If you put a mustache on Walter Matthau. Oh yeah. yeah there you go. There you go. <laughs> Boom. I mean, he's played a baseball coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> legendary one. Yeah. One of the best. Yeah. Uh, I'm just fact checking. The Bronx is burning, but we should move into, of course, the second part of this. This was the Wait bonus. Who won that one? Who won that one? The oh. the bonus of uh, yeah, who oh, won Rick? Carl Weathers? Yeah, that's Sandy. It was Andy. Reggie Jackson. Oh, sorry, that is oh, me. Yes, I did. So it's I did. two, one, and one. All right, yeah, two, one, and one. At home as one yes. might. All right, next. We're getting and so again, right. yes, we're getting to uh, some and Thurman Munson. So we wanted to tag out. Oh. Read that was a brilliant idea to say, okay, we got Reggie Jackson, but let's also throw in Thurman Munson. We have uh, Jesse Plemons, Miles Teller, and Woody Harrelson as our casting choices for Thurman Munson. I was obsessed <laughs> with Thurman Munson. And I used to, I coined this term that I would scream out and I'd get my friends to scream out. I, when he got up to the plate, I, I would scream gorilla grip. And I was hoping it would catch on. So every time he got up to the plate, I'd be like, gorilla grip. I don't know. Like there was probably, there was probably an, uh, an action figure that had gorilla grip back then uh, in the late seventies. And I was like, cause he, there was something so animal and, and rugged about him. And just, and it's funny looking back at the pictures of him now, because both these guys, I mean, they're, how how old was Reggie Jackson in seventy seven? I mean, he's probably oh, is he even thirty. Thirties for sure, yeah. Is he thirties um, for sure? Because Munson passed away, you know, in seventy nine, and yeah. he was thirty three or whatever. And mid season, which is the crazy thing too. It wasn't like an off season; it was mid season that it happened. Yeah, because um, they would play the on ESPN the Rewind Channel. They would play the game, the first game at Yankee Stadium after he died. It's like the most solemn like game yeah. because they just wanted to show like how it was, it was just was, it's so crazy to watch that time capsule it's it's crazy well i i i mean i just love this guy and he seemed and looking back it's that old school baseball where they seemed there was hard living and hard playing yeah, and yeah. They just which yeah. i just i love that about it with just the the roguishness of it and uh and there was just something so cool about him, and he and uh, but he seemed bigger than life at the time to me as a as a young kid. But now I realize these you know these guys are twenty years younger than I am. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, this is a choice part, and I love your choices. So now Jesse Plemons, old uh, Jesse Plemons uh, would fit the uniform, even though Jesse Plemons is now he's he's had a radical uh, body change, and now he's yes. just like he's yoked and yeah. just. And and a wonderful actor, but I feel temperamentally, I don't feel like he has the Thurman Munson vibe. He's Jesse's very pa calm and very passive, and I feel like Thurman Munson's in your face, yeah, that mustache, right? Um, <laughs> Woody Harrelson, prime Woody Harrelson, prime Woody Harrelson, perhaps with a mustache. Um, I like it. I like it. Um, I was but thinking. You don't. 
<laughs> I don't. I However. don't. I don't. I mean, I was thinking of of contemporary actors because I didn't know that I could time travel. And thank God you didn't tell me because that I would have I would have messed this up even more. I was thinking right now, like Austin Butler would be good oh, yeah. at it, right? Yeah. You know, Elvis, and yeah. I feel like he could bring the energy and the athleticism, but. Miles Teller, hands down, because Miles Teller not only has the look, you, you throw a mustache on that guy, but he's got, I feel like he's got the inner engine and the drive, and he could go to whatever rage, anger, competitive sports, plus, you know, obviously we're going to have tons of fun scenes with girls and pouring Budweiser over yeah. their heads and <laughs> in whatever club they're in at that point. So I feel I feel that Miles Teller could do all of that heavy lifting. So I'm going to have to say unequivocally of these picks, Miles teller is the winner for me all right well i'm glad that matt was able to pull back one for a victory because that is also my pick so uh oh, the sorry. three oh, one no. one situation oh, hey listen it's just wow. an ex it's just experience in the industry guys i mean you look at <laughs> he's got lots of credits great you know but you know look at my imdb guys this is gonna be oh, you know. <laughs> man. well this is actually the hardest because i was thinking about casting and um, obviously casting agents are really important and when when you when you showed me your picks and i thought oh my gosh who would i cast and if you could yeah. cast anyone now and how do you know and, and what it's a it is a skill but you guys you guys all of these picks were excellent i just uh I well the more. the choices of names you gave us too were fantastic as well uh and they were really they really surprised and challenged us and i like the diversity of the casting and that it's like all the different sports and all the kind of totally different characters uh and that was really they great all, they all yeah. would make good movies i think too well that's I think it so too. i think because say you gave me the challenge of like what's the biopic i want to see and then i also feel like we gotta we gotta you know spread the wealth here i don't want to just do baseball or just football and yeah get a couple of interesting women in there and yeah i think the uh so i just want to confirm fact checking here yes. uh, so john Turturro did play billy martin in the bronx Excellent. Excellent. oliver platt oliver platt is george steinbrenner that's right that's oh, right well, um and it's it's worth seeing i remember seeing a while ago if you're but if you're a fan of that and just the the fight in the dugout and all kind of stuff and the crazy stuff that happened during that time the book obviously that's based on is fantastic as well and uh as they remind you a lot that out. in the summer of, that was the summer of sam in 77 and whatever it was so all that was happening in, in the blackout and all that stuff that happened in new york then was absolute insanity and i i, I remember think when they well. make yeah. When they make this movie with Carl Weathers and uh, Miles Teller, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be you guys. <laughs> AI Carl Weathers and uh, yes, Miles right. Teller, exactly. <laughs> ding ding. That's what we're fighting uh, for. So, Reed, this was amazing. So uh, ultimately, um, if, if for you though, if you if you act to, if tomorrow, I said you're gonna get to play a sports figure. I don't care who it is. It can be anybody at all you want. Who and they're just gonna give it to you. They're gonna hand it to you. Oh yeah. Who would you? Who would you pick? Oh, that's funny. There's a few that have come up over that I've thought about that I'd want to play. Um, but if I could play any sports figure, and they would just give it to me, <laughs> it would have to be Andre the Giant. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Because that man, his life, what a good crap. That guy was just, he'd be drinking just bottles of champagne. Yeah, all yeah. that. He was this yeah. bon vivant world yeah. traveler, <laughs> highly educated, you know, savant. I mean, what an amazing fellow. I, I mean, obviously it would require some prosthetics and some preparation, yeah. but uh, definitely. Or, or some very small castmates. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, Mike, yeah. who would you play? Yeah, who would you uh, play? I would play the Iron Sheik. Yes, <laughs> Matt. They're just going to give it to you. So far, uh, uh, I'll I'll play uh, I'll play T. Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> great choice, great choice. And Absolutely. who would you play, Sandy? Peyton Manning. I mean, it was, that's all. That's all I wanted. Oh yeah, because it's it's it's, it's custom custom made exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been great reed thank you so much for doing this we're going to bring you back at some other point we're going to cast some more movies for sure and, guys uh, this was this was the best and thank you for allowing me into the circle of sports uh because i'm underqualified but i i'm i'm so grateful to be here and it's just so much fun hanging out with you guys oh it was, it was great thanks man that was great yeah. a My great friend. draft great category we had a lot of fun doing it so thank good. you good uh good. we can't I don't want to let you down we can't wait to see you in the uh, remake of The Princess Bride. Reed Diamond is <laughs> playing Andre the Giant coming up real soon. Uh, and we'll see you again. Thanks, Reed. All right. Thanks, you guys. Bye. Oh, what a draft. What a judgment. Reed Diamond. Reed. Great uh, judge. <laughs> great judge. <laughs> I'm just going to bullshit.
<laughs> just to say. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's fantastic. We appreciate Reed being on. Uh, He's great on the show. And uh, now we're now we've got a window to Brad Pitt. So that's probably next. Yeah, that's great. And also, yeah. just throwing in, we we've been doing some research here. We think there was a final round fifty eight. Jim Furyk uh, might have shot a fifty eight in twenty sixteen. We might have okay. even covered that on uh, on our uh, August seventh episode. Frank, okay. did you have anybody else? Uh, uh, Bryson DeChambeau, right? Yeah, right. it was Bryson DeChambeau. But that was on twenty twenty three, though. Yeah. Live, oh, yeah. Okay, so. but uh, for PGA, they're not counting. Yeah, right. Just covering our bases. Covering our bases as always on this day in sports. Uh, I see there's a lot of uh, fruit flies gathering around my head, so much of time to go. Uh, thanks so much for watching, listening. Uh, this day in sports. I'm Sandy Joven Bevins. I'm Matt Kippen. I'm Mike Shera, and we'll see you very soon.